This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If that never comes down, I need to... This is awesome. Finally, a squirrel came down. The forest is covered with snow. This is not a common sight here in my region. So this is absolutely welcome. Oh, I love the snow. And here in the forest where it's normally dark, it's actually a little bit lighter because the snow works like a reflect reflector and um, that will give me a little bit more light than normally. But oh, yeah. So the video I'm going to make today is similar to one that I made almost a year ago where I took you a journey on uh, from the start to going out to photograph birds and taking home uh, into Lightroom and showing the process there. So I think I'm going to make a similar video today and hopefully it will be so awesome to get a red squirrel in the snow. But uh, yeah, let's go and find out. So what I have done here now is just to make a little lump with the snow in the foreground. So I get that blurry white foreground and I put some food just uh, around a meter behind that again. And then the foreground becomes blurry enough uh, when I have that distance there. It doesn't, you don't need to like hide the food in between the snow now because the foreground is doing that job for you and now in the snow it's so perfectly because the birds are not afraid at all because they are desperately to get some food and the robin has just came down there are gray tits uh, i can see some blackbirds and i have seen the the tracks of the red squirrel on the pool and in the snow here so it has been here earlier today so hopefully we'll come back. Ah, that would be awesome. Thank you. 
some cool cool images of the robin in the snow air such a beautiful bird the robin I really love that bright red color in the breast you need to be aware of the exposure when you're photographing in the snow the camera thinks it's really bright so it's normally uh, dark pictures you're getting out of the, the just main settings but I'm overexposing by uh, 0 0.3 0 0.7 depending on the bird so we get a little bit more uh, of the details of the birds I see the squirrel I need to change my camera too close with the D500 My settings for now is uh, ISO 1250 and I get a 640 of a second to free some action and I have my F4 and overexposing by plus one so I don't get too dark pictures because like I said earlier in the snow the camera thinks it's too bright and will underexpose so I need to compensate for that. was getting some clouds and some snow in the air and I just saw squirrel air sorry about the barking dog hair it's so many people walking with dogs in the area the clouds are moving in and starting to snow all oh, hopefully you get the snow a little bit more air and I saw a squirrel Beside me here is a hopefully that will come feed. Oh, now it's snowing. Oh, now it's snowing. This is beautiful. when it's snowing it's no activity at all <laughs> come on birds give me something too bad with squirrel it would be so nice to have that
Now the squirrel is appearing. I think I need to go home now and I will put up uh, one of the pictures uh, and just go through it and edit it. But before we're going into Lightroom, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video here. Skillshare is an online learning community. It has a large library where you can learn a lot of new skills. All from photography, videography, languages, cooking, and uh, yeah, all you can think of. For the moment I'm taking a course going into depth for the drone I use, the Mavic Air. The course really goes through everything from accessorize and setting and teaching me all I need to know so I'm getting the most out of this drone. I really want to get as much knowledge as possible out of this tool so I hopefully can get better b-rolls for my videos. And this teacher, Rafael Galinsky, is indeed knowing his stuff, going into details. Compared to other learning communities online, Skillshare is not expensive with less than $10 per month and you get access to all premium material. So go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now I'm in the Lightroom and what a beautiful day I had. I really love to photograph birds or animals in the snow. It creates such a beautiful element into the pictures. So I thought I want, would go through uh, a couple of pictures here and show you what I do with them. And first of all, this picture here uh, of the squirrel coming into place, finding the food. Uh, I really love this image here because you get the tail up in the air and you also get the snow, a little like a, a powder of snow coming down to the, from the sky. And uh, you get that blurry white foreground and showing some of the animal. I really love that. Creates uh, intimacy and yeah. Overall, a uh, great picture, I think so. So I want to make it a little bit tighter. Like this. And uh, I really uh, want to experiment a little bit with my white balance because uh, I don't like it too warm in a snow picture. I want some of the cool, the freezing cold that I am experiencing when I'm out. And especially when um, the snow and the skies comes, yeah, everything turns a little bit darker and a little bit more bluish in the colors. And I want to, to uh, show that in the image as well. So I don't want it too warm, but I, I don't want to overdo it by having too cold as well. So I'm just experimenting and seeing what I like and I can change that afterwards. But I'm starting around here and uh, you can see that uh, some of the red of the squirrel hair is actually uh, losing its colors but I can fix that afterwards by going in and uh, just changing the colors, the red colors here so I um, can get them to pop a little bit more out. Uh, you see the histogram here, I'm not clipping the whites. I'm starting to have a little touch of the vibrance and the colors of the picture here. And I'm also taking a little bit down on the highlights here. And I don't, I don't want it to be flat in the snow, so I'm using the whites to pump it up a little bit here. So, and I think it's a little bit green tint. So I will take away a little bit of that tint there. Uh, I like that a little bit better. Let's see if I go a little bit down on the exposure. Actually, that was good because then you can see more of the snow in the background here. 
what I want to do also is creating a little uh, less dehaze in the picture. So I'm taking it back minus five, but I want to uh, have a little bit more of the clarity around plus 10 and the texture I'm using uh, from plus 5 to plus 10 but I'm now thinking the plus 10 would be okay and then just let's have the basic sharpening I have like an amount of 55 maybe the radius around 1.3 uh, I will have the lens correction on just press this here and I'll get rid of uh, the vignette that you get normally here is now gone but I want to have a little bit of vignetting like this and now you can see in the histogram here the highlights is actually clipping now so I will pull back a little bit more on the exposure and the whites as well let's go into the colors like I told you I'm pressing this button here and choosing the area here with the most of the red is and increasing that so you get a little bit more colors in the red there I can also go down here uh, and choose a little bit more red in the calibration tool here yeah I like that now you can see the color here uh, where well the red is, is popping more out. I think this is it for Lightroom. So I'm going to take it over into Photoshop. So now I'm into Photoshop here. And what I want to do is actually to take a little bit look on the curves. I think the curves is a little bit better than in Lightroom. Uh, uh, the Photoshop version here is has a better engine. So I think I'm going to pull a little, little S curve here to get a little bit more contrast. You can see the preview here before, after, before, after. Yeah, it pops a little bit more out. So I like that. I will apply a little bit sharpness and sharp mask and I have the amount of 158 and radius of 0.2. And then I think it's quite nice and sharp there. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, I might do another one of this like from the field into the Lightroom uh, if you enjoy this. But uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.